coming, but we'll let him join us later and we may have others join us. So let me just say welcome. Uh, as you all know, or hopefully know, this is our final of our three virtual Sunday school classes on learning how to support carbon fee and dividend. Um, I just have to say, I am so grateful, all of us are so grateful that you all have spent time with us. Um, the fact, I, I know, because I've talked with each of you <laughs> about how busy your lives are, so the fact that you took out time three different Sunday evenings uh, to be with us, is, it means a lot. It's gratifying to us and gives us some hope, you know, that, that there's people, a lot of people out there that are, are really interested in doing something about, about climate change. Um, and I think I've been opening each of our sessions with a prayer. And I think rather than that, I don't know if you all have been as engaged with all of the memorializing of John Lewis as I had this last week, but it's been hard to avoid that. <laughs> if you wanted to, it would have been hard to avoid it. But I just found it so fascinating. And um, so I, in, I, I heard some words of his, his spoken that was advice that he was giving to civil rights workers that when I heard them, I thought, you know what, they are just as applicable to people who are kind of on the front lines uh, trying to battle for a healthy, livable world. So I'm going to share, rather than a prayer, I'm going to share his words with you. So John Lewis said, do not get lost in a sea of despair. Be hopeful. Be optimistic. Our struggle is not a struggle for one day, one month, or one year. It is a struggle of a lifetime. Never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get into good trouble, necessary trouble. So what we're going to do today is we're, Christina and I are going to finish out this class talking about some ways that we can make noise and that we can get into good trouble over our earth. So that's what we have to look forward to today. And before we, before we go there, um, before we start our program, I, I'd like for each of us to have a chance to reintroduce ourselves to each other um, with three things. Our name, uh, reminding all of us of what church or organization we're representing. And then if we can, I'll invite each of us also to maybe say just a few words about one thing that is giving us some hope that the world is getting more ready to address climate change. Just one thing. I'll, I'll go ahead and start. And Great, thank you, Beth. Then we'll, um, I will, we'll do this by mutual invitation. So I will invite Great. someone else and then that person will invite someone else. Wonderful so, idea, thank you. Uh -huh. Beth Snyder and I'm with uh, Jeffersonville First Pres, and I, think that this, this is all very systemic and a justice issue, um, that we need to remake society, uh, look at some things. I think that, as everybody knows, that we've been forced in this COVID time to slow down and stay put, and the pollution has decreased. And so that is a sign to us that we should be willing to move forward and keep doing the things that we need to keep doing to, to make these changes. Great. So I will invite uh, Karen. Okay, Karen Goodwell, St. John Presbyterian. And my hope is with the, the youth that are involved in environmental issues and how we might help them. Great. You want to invite somebody, Karen? Oh, sorry. Don, are you on there? I guess yes. he hasn't isn't here yet. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, are you? I don't see you. Yeah. Okay. I was on mute. Um, oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Don Summerfield. I'm the part-time stated supply pastor at First Pres in Scottsburg, Indiana. And um in an odd way, I'm hopeful about the, the present stirring of the pot that's going on in our country, uh, politically and socially, that um, you, we'll get past the complacent 
complacency in the sense that things were good enough uh, and maybe make some strides in, um, in areas of importance like a, a more, what, there's a thing on public way, radio, strides toward a most, what, more just, verdant, and peaceful world. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll call on Rodney. I'm Rodney Smithy with uh, First Presbyterian in Jeffersonville. Uh, I'm more a uh, realist than an uh, optimist, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, I'd say that uh, in, in, the, in the long, long term, uh, there's hope. Uh, um, where there's uh, the thought that just came to mind, whether there's a time and there's a place, uh, we see some things happening today that are, are uh, almost, well, they're just sort of spiritual. Uh, some of the things that are happening with, uh, in the in the protests um, and the, the Black Lives Matter. Um, so I think, again, with, uh, with, with the environment, uh, there's a time and there's a place. It may not be in my lifetime, but, uh, you know, there's hope that it will come. Great. Who would you like to invite? Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, let's, uh, uh, Alan. 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 Oh, okay. Uh, Alan Edmonds. I'm here in uh, Bloomington, First Presbyterian in Bloomington. Um, I think that we have seen the issues related to climate change gradually taking hold. People are, people are aware. I think they still need a nudge somehow. I spent a little time this week uh, watching uh, the Catherine Hayhoe link that you uh, shared with us. Uh, I'm fortunate to have seen her in person here in Bloomington a couple of years ago and she's impressive on the screen and she's impressive in person. <laughs> uh, I see a lot of concern in the church about these issues of, of racial and economic justice nowadays. And I think one of the things we can hope for is to make the connection that Catherine did too. And she's been making it before, but climate change is a, she called it, I think a, a risk or a threat multiplier, perhaps was his, her word, that it makes all of those other problems that we are, that, that also, like climate change, have been kind of below the radar in, in our everyday life that made them, those have become more visible and climate change, I think people are beginning to realize makes, makes it worse. So in a funny way, something being worse <laughs> becomes hopeful. <laughs> Oh, let's see here. Uh, Pastor Mick. Thank you. I'm Pastor Mick. I'm a senior pastor at uh, Southern Hills Parish, which is made up of three Presbyterian churches in the Henryville area. Um, and um, I, am, um, I, I am cautiously optimistic in the fact that I'm praying that I'm praying that this is um, there's an awakening going on and that that we're, we all are being focused on several social justice issues at the same time that are happening in our country right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that we'll all understand that climate change is, is important and is, um, uh, is, is an existential threat that we all need to be aware of, but how other social justice issues are interconnected with climate change. And I'm just hoping that that the, uh, that the people and the church will commit itself to beginning to be involved in education and mobilizing people to take action on climate change. Absolutely. Mick, would you like to invite Norma? Yeah, Norma. Norma, are you, you. can you hear us? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm here. Great. <laughs> um, as we talk about climate change, um, you know, we think about all these other things, but the very simplest thing is the planting of trees. If we don't have any trees, our climate is in a lot of hurt. So I think that uh, as we talk about all the different changes we have to keep in mind, 
We have to have trees, and to have trees, we have to plant them. Absolutely. And Norma, you're from the Salem Presbyterian Church, right? Oh, yes. I <laughs> forgot who I am. <laughs> That's okay. I forget that, too. Uh, let's see. If, is everybody... Well, I, Heather, how about you? Um, I can go. I also noticed, I don't think Michael has gone... And I see another phone number down there as okay. well, but I'll go um, right now, and then I'll call on Michael. Heads okay, up. there you go. I don't um, even see Michael's name, so. Okay. So I'm Heather Swinney, and I'm one of the co-leaders of the New Albany Citizens Climate Lobby Group. Uh, and I am hopeful um, because just in the last year or two, I've been seeing some big changes um, from big to small, I'm, I'm noticing climate changes in the media and the news and the radio more it used to not be at all, I feel like. Um, and something that makes me real hopeful is that I hope I'm not putting anyone on the spot, but I know Beth Snyder and I know everyone from the Jeffersonville Presbyterian Church, your church, you went and took action and got an endorsement for a climate change bill just after being on this, these calls. Um, and if that's not something to make someone hopeful, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. So, um, you know, we can have, we can make a difference. So, um, and I'll call on Michael. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's good to be back. Yes. I I'm, I'm going to ask how you are. You have a broken ankle, right? You have a broken ankle. That's what I get for Hiking out across the rocks at the at Bird Falls Wood in the Shawnee National Forest. Oh. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, the Guard of the Gods was spectacular. Yeah. Uh, the canoe, the canoe, the paddle on the Cache River in the Cypress Swamp was great. And then Thursday, oh well, things happened. A little misstep, yeah. but I'm fine. Well, I'm uh, sorry. I hope you get well really fast so you can get back out there. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, I got, uh, Christine, I got your email. I'll, I'll respond to you shortly. Uh, several of us got an email from Daniel from Carbon Neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's several, uh, there are a lot of connections going on. It's not just mm -hmm. folks from uh, Climate Lobby. It's not just folks from different Presbyterian churches. I'm in Jennings County at Graham and Vernon. Uh, you know, it's really good to hear what's going on. Down Jeffersonville and and Hi Don, you and me go back a long way. It's just really we exciting. Do. Good to hear your voice. Yeah. It's uh, you know, I was, just recently I was looking over the uh, Keeping and Healing the Creation. It was a document from the '80s that the uh, Eco Justice Task Force of the Presbyterian Church put out. And it was talking about how we cannot separate climate from social justice issues. And uh, it, it's, what's happening now is, in a sense, it's new, but it's old. Mm -hmm. you know, so maybe, that was from the 1980s? Maybe, yes, I, I have several. I have a, a Restoring Creation for Ecology and Justice, a report to the 202nd General Assembly in 1990, Keeping and Healing the Creation, came out in the 80s and talks about earth keeping being a theological imperative that we were called to tend and keep the garden. So we need earth keeping for a theology. We need sustainability for an ethic. And we must realize that... Uh, human need, human aspect, the social aspect in, of justice and, and life is intricately tied to how we treat the earth. Uh, so it's, it's really a, 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 a very timely message. Mm -hmm. It's like the past reaching out to touch yeah. us in the present and reminding us of what's important. So I'm very hopeful of, of yeah. um, what we're trying to do as a group. Uh, you know, I'm involved with Forest Alliance, so, you know, we're trying to be involved. Uh, I'm hoping to hear more out of Senator Braun about his Climate Solutions Act, but, you know, nothing has happened much in Congress um, outside of coronavirus. So, oh, you know, but, just wait. You're going to hear more. <laughs> there's, there's, there's not been a lot of activity 
on the Climate Solutions Act because everyone's all caught up with this coronavirus business. I mean, I just recently checked his website, but I know Jeff, uh, Jeff Stamp from IFA just went down to meet with Senator Braun at his home down in Jasper to, to talk about climate. And, and it is correct, Norma, trees are huge. And more and more, uh, uh, the Indiana Department of Agriculture's got a document out that talks about forestry and climate and change, uh, urban forest that's going on uh, through DNR and other, uh, you know, Tree City USA. All that's important stuff because trees uh, sequester carbon, and we're talking about how do we count carbon so we can have credits. And for me, I think um, I'm, I'm hopeful that there's going to be some uh, real formula that comes out. Maybe maybe Braun can make it happen where, where there is some um, accepted way to measure carbon. Uh, carbon neutral is doing a good job measuring how to pro what's produced, but, you know, how do we measure so we can create this dividend idea where people are going to reduce their footprint in exchange for credit and, you know, because that's part of what this whole thing's about. So I'm really hopeful that we can finally, somebody somewhere is going to get some usable, a, 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 a way to count and measure and assign costs. Because that's going to be a big part of, of anything happening is, is getting a handle on the cost. Well, it sounds like, Michael, what you're saying is you're see, we're beginning to see some fruit, not ripe fruit yet, but some fruit forming from some of those ideas from, from back, you know, 40 to 50 years mm -hmm. ago. <laughs> we're finally start, starting to see some fruit yeah, ripening. So, so, so I, that's, I, that's you know, very hopeful. <laughs> yeah. I'm hopeful. I mean, it's sad that it takes so long. Um, one of the things I'm very hopeful about is each one of us is on this call in doing what we do because we want to leave this wonderful planet in a better place before we go. You know, we're thinking about our, our children and our grandchildren in the future, and this that that's huge. That's why we got to keep absolutely, keep absolutely. Fight. Like John said, you know, I'm always looking for good trouble. So, you know, let's <laughs> good, good. Well, let's get to it then. Let's see if we had everybody had a chance to introduce themselves except the leaders. Maybe the leaders can go real quickly. Uh, Christina, why don't you go real quick? Oh, well, I'm uh, in a general sense, I'm just filled with hope to see all of the different faith communities from Presbyterian to Catholic to Episcopal evangelical that are really bringing their voice to the issue and more specifically i'm just so hopeful to see this wonderful group we have right here and i've just been really touched by your thoughtful comments and and the hopes that you have shared right yeah uh and I, of course i'm carol from scottsburg and um what's really giving me hope right now is i, I agree with you karen it's the youth um, you know, where there's a little environmental class that I work with here in Scottsburg, and it's amazing to see those kids, the passion, the natural passion from young people for the earth. And then when I got, when I've been talking to the folks in um, Carbon Neutral Indiana, that's a bunch of college kids. You know, I mean, here, it's just amazing what college kids can do, and it's spreading and spreading. So it's young people that are going to be pushing us, old people, to do what we've needed to do for 50 years. <laughs> and then we've, we've got great people to turn over the reins to. That's, to me, that's just very hopeful. And Bill, what about you? You're muted. Bill, <laughs> are you there? Yeah, here I am. Okay. Uh, Bill Bray from the Woodlands Community Presbyterian Church. And one of the things that makes me hopeful is in CCL, we like to say our solution to climate change is democracy. And the fact that Carol and Christina got this group together and you all are joining us today, this is happening all over the country. And that's what we need is we need people to talk about the issue and the solution and we we have a good solution we just need to make our congress aware of it and enact it absolutely 
So it's time to get on with our program. And what, we're, what that's going to look like is Bill's going to take about 10 minutes to talk about, uh, remind us of what the Presbyterian connection is with all of this. And then Heather's going to take about five minutes to talk about Citizens Climate Lobby, uh, particularly the local branches and what, what's going on around here uh, and how, how, you know, some ways that we can kind of engage in that. And then the last part of our class, Christina and I are going to share some ideas that we've generated and also has kind of come from you guys too, listening to you actually uh, this afternoon about tangible next steps. If there's anyone in this group of people who wants to take a next step or a couple next steps, what some of those might look like. So Bill, why don't you take it away and, and uh, talk about the Presbyterian connection. Okay. Do you see the slides now? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so you've, this is a repeat. And <clears throat> this is the third session. We have um, videos of the, the first two sessions if you uh, missed or uh, need a reminder. And today we're going to start out talking about the story of how we got our support for Carbon Pricing Overture adopted by PCUSA and from my perspective. And, and when I retired, I wanted to advocate for carbon pricing and I also wanted to help my church more. And my church was struggling with um, the divestment issue. Um, a lot of uh, churches in the Senate of the Sun have a lot of folks who work in the oil and gas industry and didn't feel that divestment from the oil and gas industry was um, the right thing for our denomination to do, but didn't really have an answer. So a group of us got together, it was called the Fossil Fuel Planning Team, and discussed the issue, and everybody, almost everybody agreed that we needed to address climate change as a denomination. Um, but that rather than divestment, there were other better things that we could do. And so we developed three overtures and I was a champion for carbon pricing. So I developed that overture, copied a lot of the words from uh, folks who had a whole lot more experience in, in overture writing than I did and took it to my session. And my session didn't approve it. Uh, it was pretty contentious. One of the other folks in our fossil fuel planning team took it to his session, Atasca Cedar Presbyterian, also outside of Houston, and they passed it. Mm -hmm. um, then our presbytery passed it, and you have to get five more presbyteries to pass an overture to support it. Uh, concurrences, I think they, they're called. And then it goes to the uh, National General Assembly. And so we got ours to the General Assembly in Portland in 2016, and divestment was a major issue, uh, received a whole lot of, uh, of uh, interest on both sides. Our overture on carbon pricing was near unanimous in the committee. First, the overture has to go through the committee and then get to the uh, uh, general session, plenary session, and... Um, I think one person voted against it in committee. It was addressed at the plenary at the end of Friday night, the, the last issue, last substantive issue for the uh, General Assembly, I believe. And there was lots of debate on divestment. And when that vote was finalized, the moderator said, these other overtures that are related to that don't need to be addressed. So parliamentary procedure was not followed. I was pretty frustrated, um, figured we, we, we tried and asked around and there was nothing we could do, but we, we never got our overture voted on. So two years later, we came back again with a um, <clears throat> similar overture. There was another overture out of Minnesota and um, we had three overture advocates in total and the uh, 
our overture was approved by a committee by over 80 percent and then the full body by over 80 percent so just a brief reminder on on what the overture said um, the, the main thing is working with citizens voters legislators to enact this kind of uh, special kind of carbon pricing. So in CCL uh, speak, um, this overture is a lever of political will. This is something that can help move our politicians to forward on, on this issue with this solution. And so how, then the question is, well, how do we use this lever most effectively? And one of the things we did early on was to create an action team within Citizens Climate Lobby. There's, I think, half a dozen faith-based action teams and action teams. There's 50-some action teams, including a Team Oil that I've been involved with, forestry, health, um, different kinds of businesses, different kinds of social groups, conservatives, progressives bikers, all, all sorts of different action groups. But the objective was to provide education and outreach to both Citizens Climate Lobby and to Presbyterians on um, this lever of political will. And we have 62 members now and we're growing. We have calls twice a month and I'll share the, the uh, call in details for that in a, in a little bit. Uh, and we've been giving presentations to any Presbyterian organization we can find um, all over the country. I think we've gotten 13 states now and are continuing to try to spread the word that way. One of our members thought it would be great if, they, if she could get her uh, pastor to, during a sermon, uh, show how easy it was to call Congress. And she succeeded. And so there's a link in this uh, slide that uh, hopefully Carol will pass on of the whole sermon at Cherokee Park Church in, in Minnesota. But there's only three minutes um, that show the pastor calling Congress showing how easy it is. So that's, uh, we want to make that uh, video go viral. Uh, so that's an, another good example of a way just an individual can help uh, spread the word. And we're trying to connect the 9,000 plus Presbyterian congregations around the country with the, the uh, 500 uh, CCL chapters. And so that's why when we're, we're talking to you with a Presbyterian hat on, we're also inviting Heather and Heather's gonna tell you what um, CCL is doing in, in Southern Indiana. Uh, the first, we have a, a uh, national conference every year, and or, or two, but the, the first big one in June after the General Assembly uh, supported our overture, the Presbyterian Action Team wrote a letter from the Presbyterian Action Team to all the Presbyterian members of Congress. And 5% of Congress self-identifies as Presbyterian. Not all are PCUSA, and so uh, we need to be a little bit careful there. But um, of those, uh, of that 5%, we have nine Republican senators. And so that's the most important demographic in, um, in Congress and we're overrepresented with Republican senators. So that's an important group to get to. And just like uh, Jefferson uh, Presbyterian Church has endorsed uh, HR 763, great job on that. There are uh, 11 other PCUSA organizations that have also um, uh, endorsed that and, and more can, more will, and that, that helps. And Bill, we also have faith, yeah. Can I ask a question? Why is that important? That endorse, individual churches sessions endorse, endorse HR 763? Because that shows Congress 
the type of organizations that are supporting uh, this bill across the country. And one of the things we're trying to do is um, if we had more Presbyterian CCLers send more CCL letters to Congress, that, that helps. But if we can have a Presbyterian presence that is showing Congress that it's not the 180,000 CCLers um, uh, advocating for this, but it's the <clears throat> one and a half million plus Presbyterians advocating for this, that, that's more support and it's more widespread support across the country. Okay. So it adds, it adds to that widespread support to actually yep. show an endorsement from a congregation. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And we're also starting a separate organization more within the Presbyterian denomination than within CCL called Presbyterians for Carbon Dividend Now. And again, that is to create more of a Presbyterian presence. So when we go to Congress, we can go to them as Presbyterians and they see um, an independent body from CCL and um, a, a different kind of voice advocating for this solution. Mm -hmm. And we're working with the PCUSA national organizations in Louisville, in uh, Washington, uh, Earth Care congregations. There are hundreds of those and Presbyterians for Earth Care have, I don't know if they have uh, over a thousand members, but they have a large membership with similar um, views on addressing climate change. And we're trying to get to, to all these different uh, Presbyterian groups and have given talks at presbyteries and seminaries, congregations, retirement communities. And we're trying to get out information in all different form, forms of electronic and, and printed media. Great. And here are the details for our uh, call. If you're interested, we'd love to have you join it. It's the first and Thursday, first and third Thursdays of each month at um, three Eastern. And there's the, the Zoom link and that'll be in one, one of the communications from, uh, from Carol. So that is what I had, and thank you uh, so much for your uh, interest and attention on these uh, past three sessions. Okay, thank you. Heather. Heather, take it away. <laughs> All right, hey everybody, I'm gonna give you a real quick brief um, overview of some of the action we've been taking as Citizens Climate Lobby down here in New Albany, Jeffersonville area. Um, our group is only about a year and a half old, which is super cool and super awesome. And we've been doing a lot of great work. Um, but we're still learning a lot. Um, all of you would act with our New Albany um, Southern Indiana group or the group in Bloomington. Um, and so within the last year and a half, we've met with Representative Hmm. Heather, your your uh, communications is breaking up. I wonder if you turn off your video, if that would enable you to um, uh, us to hear you better. Hmm. Is she totally frozen? Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh. <laughs> Maybe she's going to call in. Hmm. Hi, can you hear me?
hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, sorry. My, I took my five minutes. My computer logged me out, of course. The minute it's my turn, I have a technical problem. Um, so anyways, we have a really dynamic group, um, and it ranges in age. We have some folks who have been in high school engaged, and actually um, the woman who is my kindergarten teacher is a member of our group. So we span ages. We span um political backgrounds. We have Republicans and progressives. Um, we are truly bipartisan, nonpartisan, and we get a lot done. Um, so we're, I'm excited about our group. We have a, um, a workshop coming up August 20th um, about some CCL work. And one of our most recent um, exciting news is, is um, I don't know if Michael and Norma, you've heard about Ron's bill, the Growing Climate Solutions Act. Um, it does have to do with carbon sequestration, and um, we really supported it um, progressing in the Senate in the House, and so um, we are really excited that after we lobbied Representative Hollingsworth, he decided to co-sponsor um, co the bill in the House. Um, and so that is an awesome step to see that he and Ron are taking bipartisan climate action right here in Indiana. Um, and we are there, you know, we're their constituents. So we have the power to um, continue that momentum with them. And it's super exciting. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I'm always available if people have more questions about our work. I'd love to talk with all of you anytime. Um, and what we're going to do now is a little brain break and to get you all energized um, for the last three slides. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to get your hand ready. Um, I'm going to say some awesome things um, or some things. Maybe you don't think they're awesome. And if it sounds like something that um, is true for you, you can give a thumbs up. Can everyone show me a thumbs up? Yay. All right. <laughs> let's try this. Um, is it true that you saw a butterfly this season? Yay, I saw one today. She was beautiful. Um, is it true that you love to go hiking? Okay, you guys got it. Let's do one more. Um, do you feel hopeful about this awesome group of people on the call right now? <laughs> All right, I know that's pretty corny. I was an elementary teacher for 11 years, um, but I like to get a little silly and corny. But we're gonna be using that thumbs up um, in the next slide. So now you know just how to do it. And I'll pass it on to Christina. Okay. Um, as um, Carol said at the beginning, this, the last three slides, we're gonna be looking at our next steps for uh, each of you as an individual in your congregations. And we'll first we'll look at things that you can do on the individual level. Um, and if Bill could bring up that next slide, that would be great. Um, so we'll be looking at things on the individual level. Then after I share that with you, Carol will be talking about possible, it's kind of like a menu, the menu of things you could do at the individual level, then Carol will shall share things you could maybe do do at the congregational level, and then she'll share things that you could do if you want to um, become involved more at an organizational level with uh, Presbyterians for Carbon Dividends instead of the individual, in addition to the individual congregational level, a, a larger level, Presbyterians for Carbon Dividends. So we have those three different areas for possible next steps. And as Heather said, as we talk about these, if you see something that you have done, give it a thumbs up, okay? Or if you just see something that you'd like to do and you think, hey, I think I could do that, you can give that a thumbs up too, okay? So here we go. As I said, I'll talk about at the individual level. Um, of course, the most important thing is just to talk with other people about the issue. Um, Alan mentioned that he'd watched Catherine Hayhoe's talk. Uh, she's a highly respected climatologist and she's an evangelical Christian. And in one of her speeches, in fact, the one she gave at Indiana University that Alan was at, that was one of her main points. Talk to people. 
you know, we so often think people are afraid to talk about climate change. We shouldn't talk about it. Go ahead, talk about it uh, with your friends, your family, your faith community. Also think about community leaders. Who do you know in the community? Maybe somebody who's in Rotary, maybe somebody who's on the Chamber of Commerce, uh, somebody who is in the city council. Those are grass top sorts of people that we could talk with. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Another thing, which I bet a lot of you already done, have already done um, on different issues is write a letter to your members of Congress or a letter to the editor. Um, or write an article for your church newsletter. Um, for example, Alan uh, and I together wrote an article, I think it was for the July um, newsletter for his church. Um, now, of those things we just talked about, um, next is join CCL and its Presbyterian Action Team. Now, why would you want to do this? Uh, we hope you might be interested in it because it has these amazing resources. And when you want to talk to other people or write a letter or write an article, CCL has these amazing resources that can help you get the job done. It's just amazing what they have on their website. So you might want to consider joining CCL and its Presbyterian Action Team in particular. Um, and if you do join CCL, uh, then we have lots of training opportunities. And um, every, uh, I think it's the first and third Wednesdays of the month, we have a basic climate advocate training. That's a really good review of the basics. I've done that one, of course, and Heather and Carol have. Um, and then Heather mentioned coming up on August 20th, um, just for the state of Indiana, we have what's called a five levers of organizing workshop. And we'll send you the link if you want to register for that. Um, as I say, Heather mentioned it. And then uh, I don't know if you remember that slide of Bill's when he was talking about the five levers of political will. He had that great photo of this old-fashioned machine with big levers. Uh, this is a workshop that teaches you about those five levers um, to help create that political will um, to get climate solutions through Congress. So those are examples of things you could do at the individual level. And I will pass it on to uh, Carol now to talk about the congregational level. Okay. So um, we all have just been through a virtual Sunday school program. Um, and, you know, that's something that any of us could organize in our own congregations is a vir virtual Sunday school having to do with carbon fee and dividend. Bill has been kind enough. This is actually the second um, virtual Sunday school program that he's uh, organized and led in our Southern Indiana district. And so it's time for us to let him off the hook because he's got other places that want him to come and, and do virtual Sunday schools and other types of work. So Christina and I, uh, only because we can do it together, neither one of us felt like we could do it by ourselves, we'll, we'll make ourselves available to anybody who wants to organize a virtual Sunday school, or if it's next year sometime when we actually can be together in our church basements or our church meeting halls, um, we would even come on site and do a, a training on site about carbon fee and dividend and the Presbyterian connection with that. So that's definitely a step that, that anybody could, could organize. Um, another one that we've talked about already is engaging our sessions to endorse uh, HR 763. And um, we actually, and, and Bill said he had issues with his session endorsing, um, you know, being able to get his session on board with the, um, with with the uh, PCUSA work, uh, you know, each church is different. Each session is different. Each church, each session in each church is different. <laughs> so, you know, that, that may be something you'd want to consider, but as, as was mentioned before, um, Beth went back to Jeff Prez after an earlier virtual Sunday school class and got it done. I think Beth, was it in the next month following the virtual Sunday school that you got that done in your session? Well, the, it actually was two months because I put it on the session agenda uh -huh. and sent them all the information and said I wanted them to review it and that we would discuss it and vote on it at the next session meeting. Okay. So that's what we did. The first thing was to get on the agenda uh -huh. and explain what a good program was, include all the educational material, and then the second time I asked for the endorsement and it was 100%. So... Wow. I think an important, but an important, um, 
<laughs> important aspect of this is that I told them that I would do the work and uh, ah. <laughs> sign us up and keep us informed, keep them informed about the bill and also write articles for the newsletter. So okay. as long as I was doing the work, they were glad. Yeah. Well, good point. Yeah. They weren't going to have to wear any more hats. All they had to do is say yes and you do the rest. <laughs> okay. Well, I, and I'm sure, Beth, you would be willing to have a phone conversation with anybody who wanted a little support or guidance in, in our own churches. Uh, to do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so also um, organizing a letter writing, email campaign, phone calls uh, within our church. Um, I don't know if there are other churches that have been involved in doing that before. The Scottsburg Pres Church has been involved for uh, 10 or 12 years in doing the annual campaign of leather letters for the Bread for the World. So this is definitely doable in my church. You know, our, our, our members are used to writing those letters and um, I would be happy and I know, I know that Christina and Heather would be happy to help anybody who's interested in organizing a letter writing campaign or an email campaign in their church um, to, to uh, do some lobbying with, with our representatives. Um, meeting your representative, um, and, and um, doing a, a letter from the church, like from the session, to let the, the um, representative know that your session has endorsed, hopefully, HR 763 would be a very powerful next step to, the, to involve your congregation. Um, and then something else um, that is, it isn't a direct path to uh, pushing forward HR 70, 763, but it's a it's a it's a kind of an indirect path for churches that maybe need to step back a step before they go forward with this, and that would be maybe to engage or re-engage a creation care team or a green team, um, and that you know it, it, those of you I know several of the churches in this group have had at one time a, an earth care congregation team in their church. Um, and there are four commitments that a church makes when they become an earth care congregation. They agree to grow green in worship, grow green in uh, facilities, grow green in Christian education, and also in outreach and advocacy. So this is kind of a little bit of a backdoor or a step back to help a church that needs help reminding maybe and, and learning a little bit about the importance of engaging um, in political activity in order to achieve um, results. So, um, you know, and that, that's something that there are several of us that have been involved in that would be very willing to, to talk with anybody who's interested in, in uh, doing that as the next step or a, a next step down the road a little bit. Okay, so the other, Bill, if you can put the next slide up, we'll go ahead and talk about the last way to take next steps. So for those people who are interested in either individual and or congregational next steps and also would like to be in a support group as a leader in their congregation, um, you know, there would be an opportunity where Christina and I are available to help organize this group that we are calling now Presbyterians for Carbon Dividend Now, just to connect it with the national group. Um, you know, this group could, would, and these are some things that the group could do. Uh, they could, coord we could coordinate together joint action to increase our voice in every context that we're working on, either individually or in our congregation. Um, we could provide support and resources for one another. Um, just as we said today, you know, Beth could be available to help churches that because she's had experience now and in, in um, uh, getting her session to be able to agree to endorse um, HR 763. I've been available, I could be available to help a church that wants to do a, a campaign of letters. Um, each of us have, have experiences. We have, we have several members of our group who've been real involved in other environmental groups who could bring their experience to bear to help provide some resources, but together we'd have more resources and certainly more support. Um, 
the other thing that would be really helpful is if we decided to do some kind of a, a campaign to contact our senator and representatives, rather than as individuals or one congregation, think about how expanded and loud our voice would be <laughs> if we all worked together and timed it at the same time. You know, so we could actually expand the influence that we have by working together and doing good timing for what for what our plans are. We could also, as a group, engage envir other environmental groups. And again, within our just this group of people that we have right here, we have folks that are involved with Carbon Neutral Indiana, Indiana Forest Alliance, and Sierra Club that I know of. And there may be other environmental groups that some of, of our members here are involved with. That could actually, so we could engage them um, both in what we're trying to do and also to help their mission. Um, we could also engage interfaith groups. Um, in each of our communities, most of our communities have some kind of ministerial associations uh, or other interfaith groups such as the Poor People's Campaign. Um, where we could actually as a group have more voice to engage those interfaith groups. Uh, as a group, as a, as a concrete group, one group to another. And the other, another way that this group could actually, I think, expand our influence would be in reaching out to other congregations, which we could do either through our own presbytery or within our, our communities. But as a group, we would have more resources and more strength and more voice in being able to do that. So, so this is another possibility too for folks that are interested in that kind of a support resource group. Um, so this is a lot, uh, you know, I don't, in our time, we're past our time, but I will just open it up if anybody has a question about any of these steps, um, ask it now, feel free. All right, well, hearing none, then let me tell you what our next steps are gonna be. So within the next day or so, you, everybody in, that is attended today will get an email from us with these next steps um, that we've talked about so that you'll have a chance to look at them, think about them, um, you know, discern whether or not you're, you want to take a next step. I mean, there, there, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we don't have some people, some folks that say, wow, this is all really interesting and great, but there's no way I have time to do anything on this. You know, I'm glad to know it and I'll do what I can, but I'm not ready to take any next steps. And that's perfectly okay. I mean, we totally get that. Um, there may be people that want to take some individual steps. There may be some folks that are ready to, to engage their congregations. And there may be some people that want to actually form a little group, uh, Presbyterians for Carbon Dividend now, but we would like to give everybody a chance to really think about that. So we'll be sending an email with, as I said, within the next day or two to let you know what, you know, remind you of what these steps are. And then Christina and I invited folks to participate in this process through phone calls to begin with. And I so enjoyed, and I know Christina did too, enjoyed talking with everyone that, that I talked with and getting to know everybody a little bit um, on the phone before we ever got started. And so we're gonna kind of, I guess, um, end our participation in this group the same way. So in about a week or a week and a half or so, when you've had a chance to really think about um, if you wanna take a next step and if so, what that might look like, we will give you a phone call just to chat with you about that and find out where you are with, um, with next steps, if anywhere. Um, so you can expect to, to hear from us, uh, you know, next weekend or the middle of next week, of the following week, uh, you'll get a phone call from us. So um, I look forward to, to seeing each one of you again. And so since we're, we're pretty far over our time, I'll just say to Heather, you, do you or Christina or Bill, do you have any last words before we sign off? I just say thank you all for joining and thank you especially Carol and Christina for organizing this. Well, and Bill, what can we say? I mean, I, <laughs> I mean you've never done it without you. <laughs> we, we really, really appreciate you all the way from Texas or Michigan, wherever you're in Michigan. <laughs> 
uh, coming to us and really guiding this process. You know, I don't, we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you so much for, for being so dedicated. And Heather, thank you. thank you for taking time away from your two wonderful young children to both plan this and to, to spend time with us. And Christina, I guess you and I are partners in crime, girl. We are. <laughs> so, I don't know if I'd be going forward without you. So I'm so glad to have you. Yeah, the feelings mutual. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do just to sign us out is I'm going to say a, a benediction and it's from Romans, the first, first chapter of Romans. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Amen. And we'll, yeah. we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, y'all. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. So, so Christina, do we need to do any planning for this email? Do you think? Um, well, we have your, the, the draft you did of, I like the way that was organized, you know, the different levers. Okay. I'll I think you that. Use that. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm thinking in a separate email, we'll want to do the various links so we don't muddy the water. That would just be a short one. Here's the link to, um, uh, well, we're going to do the link to, um, oh, to, oh, to, the, the, um, to the workshop, the August 20th workshop. And, um, Oh, we were going to do the link to the, um, that video of the pastor calling his member of Congress right during the church service. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bill, can you send that to me? Or, or maybe if you could just uh, maybe send me the slide. That would be great. Okay. I, I think I've got that link somewhere, but I have no idea where it is. I've watched it. It is at, have you all, have, have yeah. you all seen it? Heather, did you see it? I haven't. Oh no. my gosh. It's great. <laughs> it's just great. I forget if it's he or she, but the pastor's in the pulpit giving the sermon and pulls the phone out of his or her yeah. pocket. Yeah. And, and calls, calls members, calls Congress. members of Congress. <laughs> this is during worship. Yeah. <laughs> great. I mean, what, what better way to show people how easy it is? Yeah. yeah. It's great. But anyway, I've got that link somewhere, but I don't know where it is. So, Bill, if you've got it handy and could email it to me, that's great. I, I'm putting it in chat right now. Oh, okay. Now, so how can I get it out of chat? You how can just uh, copy it. Copy it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Put your cursor over it, highlight it, press control C. Uh, I'm having trouble. I'm even having trouble getting the chat. Hold on a second. All right, here we go. To Bill. Okay. While she's doing that, Heather, I noticed in the chat that Michael Bean was the link to um, the New Albany monthly meetings. Um, so if you could send me that link. Yes, and he's New Albany. Where he's in Jennings County? Is that is that closest to New Albany? Ooh, yeah. He, Where's that? Mike Bean's in Vernon, isn't he? I'm sorry, Carol's doing something else there. Anyway. Um, but I agree. I think it would be good to, um, I mean, he's asking for the CCL meetings link. So maybe if we could just include the New Albany and Bloomington one? Yeah, or... yeah. yeah New Albany and Bloomington. Yep. And then he's also asking for the group contact list. It might be great to send, resend that out. Um, I know you sent it out one time, but. Yep. Um, with people's info on there. Hey, any luck, Carol? No, I don't see it. I don't see it either, but maybe he did it yeah. privately just to you. No, I did it to everyone. I don't see it on my chat either. I don't either. Oh, oh there it is. Okay. All right. I, yeah. That's oh, because I, I didn't hit enter. You need to hit enter. <laughs> oh, how many times have I done too. that? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh-oh. 
Whoops. Oh my goodness. Hey, I have it copied. I can email it to you. Would you? Okay, because I'm yeah. having trouble even getting my, yeah. If you, well. Okay. Yep, I just emailed it to you. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate it. All right. All right. So any, any other links that should go in that email? The, the only ones, those are the only ones that uh, I jotted down and then from the chat, so. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, I was wondering, and uh, just usually when I like, I don't know, do something like this or participate, sometimes they have an after um, session like survey or reflection. Mm -hmm. so, but I know you all are going to talk with people, mm -hmm. but if you wanted this if feedback for like Bill or you all for future Sunday schools, it could be something to think about. But. Oh, okay. You mean like a little um, satisfaction survey for the program or, you know. Yeah. Any, any suggestions for the next time? Yeah, that's not, that's not a bad idea. I like that. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to have feedback and. Yeah. Continuously improve. Um, I think, you know, things that it would be good. I mean, I get you could go many ways with that, but I think asking for things that were confusing or things that they really took away could mm -hmm. be helpful. Um, yeah. Or what they would want more time on or less time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. Okay. But you all did great. What a great job. Well, awesome uh, yeah, I, I thought no. I, I felt better about this session than any of the than the first two. And uh, I think something that we can pat ourselves on the back about is that we kept everybody, didn't we? I don't think we had any dropouts. Uh, no, we had two people who never made it at all. <laughs> okay, so, uh, but the people know, know because you didn't, you didn't know about them. <laughs> but of the people that actually came, yeah, we had fewer people last time than uh -huh. even the other two. So, but, um, uh, you know, you know I think that's pretty incredible that of the people who attended the first session, we still yeah. had those people at we the last everybody. session. We did get everybody, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, uh, we had let's see, who was the other Steve from the Jeff Press Church? Yeah, he didn't come back today which I didn't feel too bad about. In fact, I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised that Rodney came because Beth had told me she wasn't sure if they would come for both sessions, but she wanted them to come because she wants them to be part of this green team. So anyway, I was glad that he did. But. Okay, well, I have got to go help my mom with okay. dinner, so. <laughs> nice, thank you, thank you so much. And Christina, we'll be in touch. And Bill, I'm sure yeah. you, we'll be in touch with you too. You're not yeah. going to get away that easy. <laughs> and Heather, yep. and and, and, we'll, be in, we'll be in touch with you. So thank yep. you guys. And, Enjoy the rest and, of the day. Bye. Three things that I'm going to do are um, I'm, I'm uploading the presentation to the Presbyterian Action Team files for okay. presentations. I'll get the video link to you. Mm -hmm. And I, I have filed a field report with CCL for each okay. of these. And I, I should have been copying you on them, but, yeah. but I will file a field report and I'll copy all three of you on that. Right. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. Yep. Good Thanks. job. Good luck Bye -bye. with it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.